All right, well, bed back on the toilet seat. That's certainly another old favourite from the past, isn't it? Most definitely, um, old Slim Newton. Yes, that's right, that's right. But a very popular song, wasn't it? It certainly was. Yes, it was a very popular song. we go that was guess who uh florina forbes it was florina forbes here's a great highlight of my day to be talking with you online jack oh most definitely okay well this time i'll let you shut me up oh thank you (laughs) okay (laughs) now where was um florina forbes born well i was actually born here in bendigo itself in a little house up in Long Gully. I've, I've actually spent my whole life here in Bendigo in central Victoria. Now, music played uh, a great part in your life. Um, when did it all start? Well, it probably it, it would have... I'm very lucky to have had a wonderful sister and a wonderful brother, and w- we've shared a lovely childhood together, and we've sang and, uh, and joined um, our father on... Um, um, trips to the uh, Murray River where he used to love to go fishing and he'd play his mouth organ and his uh, button accordion and we'd, we'd sit around the campfire and we'd, uh, we'd um, um, play and sing our, our music and uh, it was uh, my dad actually was a member of the Eagle Hawk Brass Band so he's a very musical person he played the big uh, double bass guitar oh lovely mm-hmm. Uh, apart from uh, listening to all your favourite tunes, 
uh, and singing around the campfire, as you just uh, stated. Uh, when did the opportunity actually uh, come about when you started singing and entertaining yourself? Well, I learned. The, I, I was late in life uh, learning the guitar. Uh, I didn't learn it until around 1960 because um, I married young. I had two beautiful children, Di- Julie and Diane, and I always put their their welfare at heart and, and never followed this career until later on in life. And uh, so... Um, I bought a guitar in the, in, uh, in the 1960s. I went to a music store by the name of Rick Colson, which was up in View Street here in Bendigo. And would you like me to tell you uh, how we did that? Uh, I would like to know the make of the guitar. Oh, well, at the, the, my first guitar actually was a, was a bolero at the time, but I um, stood it up against a wall at, and it snapped in half and broke in half, so I had to go and buy a, another one, and it's a Kasuga, and uh, that was my very first guitar that I did play, and I'm proud to say that I have a beautiful uh, niece that uh, plays that particular guitar today, and the guitar is just like new. She has uh, cherished it all her life. And uh, so um, that guitar is still going, but the main ones that I did play were um, a Fender guitar, which uh, my partner Robert bought me, and um, I um, I played that twelve string guitar for all, all uh, most of the time in the tumbleweed band. I had another twelve string too, which I used to play called Takamini. I played that in the, earlier in the piece, but then I got the other one, and uh, and that one seems to suit me better, so I used that particular guitar. Now, Florina, I believe that uh, your husband, Wal, um, uh, also had a musical background before he met you. Yeah, my husband, Wal, um, was a member of the Salvation Army. He he uh, he, used to, he had one of those great big slap basses that um, I've always admired and still do in the bluegrass uh, field like the play. It's nothing nicer than to hear the big bass slapping. I, it broke my heart one day when he came home and said, I've sold the guitar and I've bought a, an ordinary bass guitar. I, you know, I said, well, you know, I really loved it. But anyway, that's okay. We, uh, Wal and I uh, did... Um, uh, we actually got a, a, a job to do a wedding anniversary. My stepson, Wayne, uh, played the drums. So the three of us went up and played at this wedding anniversary and we thought there'd only be a couple of people there. There wouldn't be too many there, you know. We thought it was a little gathering, but it wasn't a little gathering. It was a uh, huge gathering, I thought, at the time because there was 100 people plus. Like many country singers, um, they nearly mostly had... Um country bands and uh, you had a country band yourself, um, Tumbleweed. I did have the band Tumbleweed but when we came back from this wedding anniversary we decided well the best thing to do would be to form a band and we formed the band and uh, we had Bill Buckle from uh, Rochester many years ago and he, he played the lead and Wayne on the drums, Wally on the bass, myself and I played the guitar. Well, that's how it actually began. Molly uh, was on bass and Wayne was on drums and I was on guitar. And we had many members in our band. Uh, Billy Simons was on keyboard, which is now with another band called Midnight Blue, I think the name of the band is at the moment. But he's, he was in my band too, in the Tumbleweed Band. I had uh, a Teddy Bullo on uh, drums and I had uh, um, John Picken and uh, Johnny Cockfield. Uh, there's so many artists that I will leave a lot of artists out so I can't uh, mention every artist that was actually uh, uh, there. But um, we, we had a marvellous time and uh, that is actually how the band started. Um, you and your husband, well, uh, begin to get more and more uh, in the country music scene and meeting many other greatest, uh, great artists. And uh, you both decided you would uh, like to form a country music club in Bendigo, Central Victoria here. Uh, when did this take place? Well, that took place in 1979. There was a Bendigo Country Music Club was formed with uh, Olive Bice as president. Snowy Jensen uh, was alive in those days too and he, he was the vice president and he's another great country music um, artist which actually got me into the country music scene. He, uh, 
he knew I'd learned to play the guitar and, and said, come on, you've got to get out there and get into it and introduced me to Olive. And so th- that's where that started. But uh, we had um, the assistant secretary was Bill Moore and John N- Nadort was the publicity officer. Ray Dalton was the program manager. And, of course, Walt Forbes uh, was a committee member, included Nancy Sheehan and... Uh, Peter Sheehan, Noel Jensen, Hank Moore, Lynn Golding and Leon Golding. So uh, we did start this wonderful club. So after the club uh, was formed and having regular shows, uh, where did it go from there? Well, there were two spectacular concerts which were held at the uh, Country Music Club and the first one was called the Country and Western Spectacular and that was held on Friday the 21st of, of November in 1980. The second was held on the uh, on Friday the, the uh, the 20, um, Friday the 21st of November in 1981 and both of these concerts were very well received and used and um, received great success. The um, Unfortunately the club did fold um, after about four years but a new country music club did uh, come out of that and uh, it was called the Country Talent Club and that Country Talent Club is still operating today and uh, is a very, very successful uh, club that's held on the third Sunday of every month. Now, uh, Florina, tell us uh, the story of your Dolly Parton lookalike shows and where it, it all started. Well, my Dolly Parton, it, it, it was something that was done in jest and, and, it's, and it's followed me right through the last 40 years probably of my life, uh, whereas it's... Um, I, I did it at the Bendigo Club many, many years ago and I dressed up as Dolly Parton and um, of course I was a little younger at the time then and looked a little bit like Dolly Parton <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it went over very, very well and, and from that night on, the next time I went to Tamworth, uh, not to Tamworth, the Wandong Country Music Festival, there was a Dolly Parton uh, lookalike concert there and contest I should say and uh, I entered into this contest and uh, um, I didn't actually win the show but the uh, one of the editors of the Weekly Times at the time called Mary Maxwell she came to me and she said as far as I'm concerned you're the one that's won it but I didn't win it and she took my photo and then I had a police escort all the way around uh, the uh, Country Music Festival. It was really c- quite funny. Dead set. Yeah, so <laughs> that's what happened with Dolly. And you know, Dolly is still appearing occasionally today and it still draws a big crowd. But there's one thing about Dolly's uh, show. She's very well out in front of everyone else. Um, always in one. <laughs> uh, there was to come a sad uh, event that took place in 1984 with the uh, loss of your husband, uh, Walt Forbes. Yes, it was very, very sad. He was a very dear man and uh, uh, it was a great loss to the community, not only to me but to a lot of people that actually loved uh, Walt. He had a great personality and shared everything he had with everybody uh, else. So, um, um, But... Um, he left me in 1984, and uh, in 1985, uh, 1985, I went out and started a new band, and uh, it all began again. Uh, I believe you um, have been very active in fundraising and uh, over many years singing for the uh, sick, the elderly, and helping many people through some very bad times. Well, yes, um, I always look at other people and 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 think that. Uh, if, if I can bring them a little bit of pleasure and uh, and make their life happier just through giving some of my time, that would thrill me immensely, you know. And after being sick myself uh, on and off throughout the years, I've been able to really appreciate the help that all these people do need. Now, Florina, you cut your first um, album titled Florina in 1987 on the Remick uh, label. Now, your second album titled uh, Florina Forbes' Country Favourites was recorded in 1989 um, on Kenyan audio label. On, on this particular album, you and your uh, partner, Rob, uh, wrote a special song titled Goodbye to a Friend. Yes, we did. And, and that 
uh, and that was um, a very special song, probably more to Rob and I. Kevin Fitzpatrick was one of our, our bass players, and uh, uh, after Wally had died, I, I did um, hire another bass player, and that was Kevin Fitzpatrick. And little did I know I was going to lose, uh, lose him uh, two or three years later with the same complaint. And um, we wrote this song called Goodbye to a Friend. Rob and I sat in the hallway one night after his death and we, we wrote these words down and then we, we, we put some music to it. And then, so when I recorded my next album, I put it on that album and it's on the country favourites album called Goodbye to a Friend. We um, singers and uh, you were... Uh, heavily involved with uh, boot scooting when it uh, came around about 1990? Yes, around about, about 1991, yeah, around 1991 during that uh, course of time it, it was, uh, boot scooting was uh, the craze in those days, you know, like I mean it, it just uh, everywhere you went it was uh, it was there and mind you it still is today uh, it's still out there um uh, my partner Rob and I decided to do was to go out and learn um, boot scooting, and then we could teach it to everybody. Every and we could do even adapt the a lot of the dances to many of the old country classics that we we play uh, at the time. And uh, of course, uh, we'd travel. Um, for miles uh, in a bus and we'd take all our line dancers with us and we had our own line dance uh, team that we uh, we had called the Tumbleweed uh, line da- uh, Country Line Dancers and even at the Barham Club, the Tooley Buck Club, um, many of those places we, we, um, uh, we did a lot of clubs in New South Wales where we'd take the, the line dance team with us. We'd play the songs, they'd do a demonstration and quite often mm. we'd, we might even go an hour or two early just to teach some of the people the dances so that when we played they'd get up and, and dance. So it was a very, very memorable time. There was a decision uh, made not to tow the band trailer anymore because of its heavy load and equipment. Uh, so the band decided to hire a bus. Tell us more about that as it unfolded. Yes, well, I I used to drive the bus and I had the other band members in the bus and and uh, like all band members, they smoked and drank and had a good time and there was always one dedicated driver that didn't. So um, I used to drive home but I, I got to the point where I I couldn't drive any longer. I would get too tired, and I nearly ran off the road coming home from the Dunelequin Club one night. So I decided, if I sold the car, I couldn't tow the band trailer. And uh, so then we started to hire a bus, and then our fans started to come with us as well. And we'd fill the bus, and um, there are a lot of people today that um, still remember our bus trips, you know. They'd bring all their goodies on the bus, they had lollies and their drinks and everything. It was a really happy, happy time. Uh, they'd come along with us and we'd get home two, three, four in the morning. <laughs> and um, it was a really wonderful time. And you had a great passion for um, bluegrass music and formed an eight-piece bluegrass band called BBB. <laughs> I certainly did. That's Bendigo Bluegrass Band. <laughs> That's what BBB means. And um, um, the mem- it, was, it was a big group. We, it didn't last very long, and I never class it now as being disbanded because one day I still hope to be able to get up there with everybody and do it again. But in that band, we, we had... Um, uh, well, Jeff Morris is actually in it with me. There was myself and Jeff Morris, uh, Sue Webb, and she played mandolin and the harmonica and done some harmonies with us. Then we had Roy Webb, and he was on the guitar and harmony. Chris Ryan, uh, he played the banjo and uh, uh, sang some harmonies and certainly does an absolutely brilliant job at that. And Tony Ryan, he played the dobro. Uh, Finn Matthews was on the uh, the big bass, big slap bass, and Penelope Somerville was on fiddle and harmony. And um, 
the group would actually go on and rename themselves as the Tumbleweed Band as as uh, a little bit later on we changed it to the Tumbleweed Band. I, I never, even though I like the title of the Bluegrass Band, the, the name Tumbleweed seemed to want to stick with me. So <laughs> that's what I, I went over in the last couple of gigs that we actually did. Now, in uh, 2006, you joined Phoenix FM 106.7 in Bendigo here, where we are today. That's right. And uh, I'm very proud to be a member of Phoenix 106.7. It's the most wonderful station. It's very friendly. And uh, it certainly uh, um, looks after all its uh, announcers. And I enjoy being able to produce... Uh, well, our show, Jack, your, yours and mine, the pioneers of country music and and other shows, it's, and it's a, a station that you can tune into and get a different uh, a, a program that actually suits you, being a community radio station. And in two thousand and seven, you formed a three uh, a three country divas uh, show with Olive Bice and Anne Conway. Uh, how, how did this eventuate? Well. Um, the three divas with uh, Olive Bice and Anne Conway, uh, have, we, we've all, we always love being together. It's a very happy occasion and we, we form together to raise money for um, charities. We, uh, we've worked very hard and, 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 um, and raised thousands of dollars with the uh, three divas through, through um, putting on, on these shows and Oh, I keep saying there will be another one, and I'm sure there will be. So, uh, yep, it, it, it's a pleasure to be able to be a part of that group as well. Uh, in 2008, um, your world uh, crumbled once again when you found out that uh, you had breast cancer. Yes, I did. It did certainly crumble. And uh, it's a, a hard time in anyone's life that's been through that sort of thing. But there's also a, a, a great fighting side that comes out of you and you know that you're going to work your way way through this and there's so many people today that that recover well from breast cancer and I seem to be one of those that are going well. So, you know, one time when you had breast cancer, you, you know, you thought it was going to be the end, but it's, it's not the end anymore. Uh, early, early this year in uh, 2012, uh, you released a new album, called For the Good Times, uh, recorded at Shoe Fly uh, Studios. Uh, you've continued to enjoy uh, producing shows and promoting other artists and uh, still perform at country music clubs and festivals. Yes, I certainly do. And um, the album called For the Good Times was um, made just before Christmas last year, 2011. And it's got some great tracks on it and... Uh, I'm so pleased that I did it. Uh, it may be my last one. I won't promise that it's not because when everybody says oh, they're going to retire, they don't. And you're on Phoenix 106.7 and I'm going to say thank you to you, Jack, for joining me this morning. Um, it, and now it's afternoon. It's always a pleasure. And um, it's been lovely to have you in the studio and uh, we always say live in the studio but then I wouldn't like to see you in here dead. <laughs> Oh well, <laughs> <laughs> but no, we'll have to have a. We've got to have a bit of a laugh, don't exactly. we? Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's been a pleasure to have you in here today, and and I do know that you're a man that likes a lot of humour, and um, if you go onto my website, you'll be able to click on a. Um, a, a photo on my webpage, it's just called Drongo Jack. And